Richard Linklater. Come on up, Rick. Thanks, Lars. It's always hard to follow Lars's interests, but I'll try. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, everything you said about this theater, I, I second. This is the most special place in the world, and I'm just so grateful at this moment that we're, we can all be here and <laughs> watching this movie. It, mean, it means a lot to me. This, this film ended up uh, a pandemic project, <laughs> let's say. The last, last two years, this is what, uh, how I spent my pandemic and my whole post-production crew and certainly if Sandra's here later we can an answer questions about editing and you know 150 animators all over the world were working on this so we all had a great time in a not very good time in the world <laughs> and the film I, I don't want to say too much you know I'll, I'll talk about it after it's uh, let me just say it's kind of a recreation of a moment in time and it's also a recreation of a of an actual fantasy from from back then, but it, it's all kind of it sounds crazy, but it's all based on fact, you know. Even even the fantasy part, it, it's a real fantasy, but within that, <laughs> and that's a fact, right? <laughs> Fifty plus years later, um, within that, all all the NASA, the the space mission, all that. This was a big historical research project for us. We. Um, Everything to do with the, the mission, it's all based on actual transcriptions of transmissions. You'll see a lot of documentary footage and all that. So we're really trying to kind of recreate a moment in time, but from a from kind of a bottom-up perspective of, of the workers and the kids. We've seen a lot of astronaut movies, but you know, they're always kind of start at the top. This is kind of that whole what it was ex what it was like just to be a a kid or just be watching it all. Like it was such an it's an exciting moment, and I thought, well, that's worth making a film about. So all these years later, here we are, and it's just, it's great you guys are here, and uh, look forward to talking after. So, all right. Thanks a lot, guys. I want to bring up some very special guests, because we've got Rick Link later. Come on up, Rick. All right. And we've got producer Mike Blizzard. Come on up. Come on up, Mike. But that's not all. Because we got the star of the show, Milo Coy. Come on up, Milo. <laughs> Cover boy. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, you guys, uh, you guys are gonna have some questions. I want to ask you guys a couple of questions first. So, um, had this now Mike Blizzard as the producer, the guy who has his hands on the financial reins of this whole thing. <laughs> I gotta say. If you had decided to make this as a live action movie, how much would the budget have been? Well, it has to be over $100 million <laughs> to take people to Astro World. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> to the moon and back, and yeah. Astro World and back. And the to moon, believe Astro very World. expensive. Yeah, yeah, and to believe that Milo's actually walking on the moon and right. all that would be, would be a major, major expense. Yeah. And very so dangerous. There would be no way to really do it that way. No, yeah, I mean, it was conceived you know, was. as live action, and that's kind of the default mode. And then just as the years went by, it was like, oh, that's not really working. <laughs> you know, it's just, plus the literalness of live action, the fantasy, the, you know, it might have, you might have, you might have had your critical brain going and said, wait a second, this isn't, couldn't have happened. The, the amount of so. detail that you're able to get in there by having it be animated, and first of all, you don't even like, I don't know, I don't, I don't watch it and think, oh, this is animated. After a while, you're just like, this is memory, you know? It just kind of feels like memory. Um, but Definitely how much a of memory movie, yeah. yeah? How much of this, uh, Rick? I want to know how much of this actually happened. <laughs> uh, well, I've not been authorized to talk about this for 50 years, <laughs> but I do have news. I'll say tonight. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, at all. It's 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 pretty darn autobiographical, but maybe not point by point. You know, I did live kind of near NASA. There, we were out in the suburbs for about a year and a half when I was in. I wasn't in fourth grade like Stan's character, but I was in second grade, between second and third grade, when we walked on the moon. Um, my dad didn't work at NASA, but I had a lot of friends who did. I had to warn my dad, my 91-year-old dad, he saw the movie last week, and I said, okay, dad, <laughs> you're not the cheapskate, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that the movie makes you out to do. You didn't work at NASA, so that's all fictional. But you did steal that piece of plywood that we made a ping pong table out of. <laughs> he just laughed, he thought that was hilarious. But no, it's all. My sister worked at Baskin Robbins. My, you know, er, 
I had those are my grandmothers and and was that and was that fathers was, was that actually sort of like a, a daydream or a fantasy that you had? Yes, yeah, that's what kind of made it unique. It was like as I was actually it it when I was making Boyhood, it, it was the second year of Boyhood because I was thinking every year of first grade, first grade, just kind of recalling my own life. The the architecture of that movie was was autobiographical, but not period, you know. So when I got to year two, I was like, oh, wait, that was a kind of interesting time to be a kid, be alive. Well, you know, we haven't really taught that. <laughs> you know, when, when you're young at NASA, it, like the movie says, you thought we'd be on Mars. And, you know, the so much was accomplished in such a short amount of time that you extrapolate that out. And you know, it, it took a long time for our culture to realize, oh, that was an apex. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. that. Yeah. It, it, to me, it got even bigger. It was an even bigger accomplishment. So from my point of view, I said, well, that's interesting to actually capture what it felt like to be around then. And then also the specifics of the mission itself, I think we had an interesting inroad with, you know, Stan's mission, because that's all NASA accurate, I would say. You know, we, we spent years just uh, doing all kinds of archival research, and it becomes, you know, when I think of this film, it's like archival history and like personal history kind of mashing up together. But when I talked to you first about this, that was like 04 when I had the idea and it was just spinning around in my head. What was it? 2012, I think. Yeah. When we first talked about, about 10 yeah. years ago, we started yeah. down the path and Mike just jumped on as an enthusiast. He's like, I live, you know, right by NASA. He was, Tommy Pilata and I went to Westwood Elementary School, which is several elementary schools away from NASA, but still in the area. But Mike actually went to Ed White. <laughs> he was <laughs> like, I went, oh, you're the one right next to NASA. Wow. So yeah. we'll use that. So that's a good example of it not being specifically autobiographical. I didn't go to Ed White School elementary. I went to another, but you know. And kick, kickball was the game <laughs> well, <every laughs> at Ed White <laughs> Elementary. So I'm sure it wasn't many, many other elementaries. But. Had you ever played kickball? Uh, we played kickball, and that's the first time that someone ever tried to hit me. Because <laughs> uh, I said that it was a bad pitch. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so Milo, I get the impression watching this, and I don't know if this is true of these guys. I'm, I'm very young, too, like you. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, it seems like everybody was trying to kill each other. It's like Roman candle fights. This is a kickball. It's all this nonsense. It was like, when you looked at this, did it, did, did it all sort of resonate with you as like something that you identified with as like a kid growing up? Or did it seem like complete insanity? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems like it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty fun. Shooting people with these like yeah. yeah. flamethrowers. Yeah. <laughs> you missed the era where the adults just didn't care that much about you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, you got your eye put out. It's like, oh, that's a bummer. But will that cost us anything? Yeah. So, 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 oh, I'm sorry, Milo. Go ahead. I was gonna say, whenever my, whenever I get hurt, my mom or dad, they go. Uh, are you bleeding? I, and I go, no. And they go, uh, are you going to live? <laughs> and I go, yeah. And then they go, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's perpetual, I think, in parenting. That's also a special. I know your dad. That's a special case. He's a maniac. <laughs> um, so I want to find out. I want to go to the audience for some questions in a minute. But, but first of all, the, the de level of detail and all that Astro World stuff, like, did you just remember, <laughs> like, this went there, or did you talk to people? Like, how did you find that level of detail? If there's one thing I have in this world, it's a really exacting memory. So, and it was easy. I was just recalling it. Like, I really was up on the Astro Way when we heard, you know, I was at Astro World. We did go. I was probably asleep when they walked on the moon <laughs> later. <laughs> but I think I saw it, actually, you know, <laughs> as the movie. You know, so... All that's really, really close. So it was a memory, but there's still, there's nothing like a lot of historical research to get it exactly right, you know, because I, I had it in the script. We had watched The Wonderful World of Disney on Sunday nights. It was kind of melancholy. And then in our research, it pulled up, oh, it wasn't called Disney till 70. In 69, it was still called The Wonderful World of Color. It's yeah. like, oh, yes. let's get that detail right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so every little detail, we're like, why not? We, we have our dates, we have our times, so we're being specific, like, 
So what episode was of Beverly Hillbillies was on <laughs> at that moment? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could get it. Janis Joplin <laughs> was on at that cabin that cabin, night. Yeah. All that is, I mean, I don't know if that's, you just got to aim for that, you know, to be as perfect as possible. But it was, it was fun to kind of get into that minutia because that was really my idea to just smother the viewer in that kind of, that kind of specificity. Mm -hmm. And the more your brain could be there, I think the more maybe you buy the, the fantasy part too. It's just, it's sort of a trick maybe to pull you into some kind of reality. Yeah. It, se it seems very vivid. It almost mm -hmm. seems like, uh, like there must've been a lot of visual research that went into that. Was that true, Mike? Yeah. yeah well, the Astro world in particular, you know, I think yeah. Rick, even in the script listed out almost all the rides that were there at the time, <laughs> but then we I were able to, the ones I like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then <clears throat> we put out a call in 2017 yeah. for Houston people to send us their home movies. And one thing you'll find if you ever do this, that 90% of the home movies you get birthdays, Christmas. <laughs> so <laughs> this and, was and morning, still a lot birthdays, of Astroworld. But Astroworld. A lot of people if you took went their to Super Astroworld, 8 you took to them. So all those yeah. rides we were able to get visuals of. Yeah. Oh, man. And plus they had promo films that they put out. Yeah. There was newscast. We dug up every visual of Astroworld, especially for the Alpine Sleigh Ride, because we, you're yeah. seeing it at multiple angles. That so we had to the find the work of how it looked. The so. Um, that ride. that took a really long time for the animators to get that right. And there was that crazy TV promo. What was that? The oh yeah, there was some movie. Terrible. Um, Soupy Sales was in. It yeah. was a 1968 like special that like we got um, something from so UCLA. It, it was a pretty good visual of it. Yeah. It was so cheesy. But yeah, it was really that dumb. helped a lot with the Alpine sleigh ride. Yeah, but we needed all the visual reference because we're tr it's a communication challenge. You know, you're communicating to all these. Uh, animators, mostly in Amsterdam, trying to explain what the Black Dragon looked like, you know, <laughs> spinning. You can't do it, you know, but if you could show a shitty home movie where it's like, that's the Black Dragon, okay? See how it spins? And, uh, and they're like, okay, looks like an octopus. Yeah. And they did an so. amazing job. <laughs> they, they really did. And it was such a fun communication because, like, oh, the Little League stuff, they have no reference to baseball. It's like, that's you got to either be an outfielder or a second baseman. They're right. You know, you just, it was just constant back and forth communication. Uh, just explaining stuff is pretty funny, but they worked so hard and they were so good. And uh, yeah, that's what we spent Clearly. 18 solid months doing after <laughs> we locked picture. Oh my God, like Sandra and I, wow. you know, we we worked on yeah. So that that was our two years. Yeah. And we should shout out Sandra Adair who yeah, edited she, this we thing. We thought she might be here. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> my longtime editor. It was like it was very very methodical and and fun and. Just a little, it was it was weird what it looked like before it was animated, put it like that, but you had to have references, so. Yeah. And you have to edit it down before you send it to animation because it's yeah, so expensive to, to animate that you wouldn't want to be editing. Yeah, you want a lot you know, of pictures. Animating 20 minutes that you're gonna cut from the picture. So yeah, you have all the music, all Jack's narration. We spent, that was a very systematic fun, you know, Jack's so fun to work with. He was like, he'll do it, but he's like, I never want to walk into a studio. <laughs> you know, I'm like, fine, do it from your closet at home. He's like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, because I think Kung Fu Panda, that you know, they call you into the studio. Oh, we have a new line for you know, it's like 87 trips to yeah, the studio. Yeah. He's like, if I never have to leave my house, I'm all in. <laughs> and uh, he was, he was great. He he was really funny and liked it, and it, that was a a fun ongoing um, process. His mom worked yeah. for NASA. Jack yeah, Black yeah. was a sci NASA scientist. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's another thing that attracted him. He's like, yeah, it was kind of in his, in his bones. He said he did not inherit her mind. I think his sister got that. He said, I didn't get her brain. But yeah, she was a badass aerospace engineer. Yeah. Super cool. I'm sure we have some questions from our audience. Who's got questions for any of the folks we have on stage? I see a hand right back here. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sharp. I don't know if, if everyone would agree always, but uh, um, I don't know. You know, just it's one of those things. Just trying to tell a story. You know, each one's different. That's what I love about this. You know, every film is like you're you're writing your thesis on a new subject, and you learn all about it. This was the dive to the '60s. L learned so much about the the time, even though, and that's what I was intentionally wanted the film to be 
both kid-like and adult reflection on that time. You know, you get older, you have a slightly different view of it. So that, but, but pulling up all the history, it was so fun to look at all that. We were going like, wow, they got Kurt Vonnegut on TV just crapping all over NASA. <laughs> and <laughs> Gloria Stein, he didn't make the final that cut. Got cut. Kurt, yeah, <laughs> he didn't make the cut. But uh, Gloria and our messenger, you know, but that was the dialogue of that time. So it was such an eye-opener to kind of get into that kind of detail and then include that in the script and in the movie. So, but I don't know if I'm answering your question, you know, just... <laughs> Rick, is it, is it safe to say? Is it safe to say that for aspiring filmmakers, they should watch films on the big screen? <laughs> Perhaps at AFS <laughs> all the time. <laughs> we kid, but it's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I would say, yeah, watch, watch, watch everything. You know, like I've heard that advice from you before, so I'm just yeah, prompting of you. Of course. Let's see it if we have some, some more. I have a uh, hand right over here. Yeah. You know, all that Cronkite, CBS, you, you license that. They make money on that. NASA, on the other hand, <laughs> by far my favorite government agency. <laughs> um, always has been, always will be. Um, it's all free. We paid for it as taxpayers. They're so generous. They're so supportive. They're just wonderful. I mean, I don't know yeah. how our experience with them continues to be wonderful. You know, just they've been, they're just awesome. I, I can't explain it any other way. They're just, they give yeah. you everything. They they just so supportive. I don't know. From the very beginning, yeah. Bert Ulrich, who is um, their head liaison for film and TV, has just been the biggest fan. He's a fan of Rick's already, so he was excited about the project. Well, they love that we're from Houston. I mean, yeah, we're from there. And they, and they saw it. And so, yeah. And so they let us into the program, you know, to sort of get access to staff working with us uh, based on a yeah. one page summary of what the film was yeah. going to be. Um, and he says, do you have anything in writing? He's like, oh, we could come up with something real quick. And yeah. they said, oh, this sounds great. And, um, and so they, you know, then they assign you people who are helping you go through the archives. And we reverse engineered some stuff because it's, so, yeah. it's so huge. So we would go through all the space documentaries that would be made and say, oh, that's interesting, that's interesting. Yeah. Where can that be found in your archive and try to match it that way? Um, and... You know, they were helpful. They're, they're helpful to this day. <laughs> to this day, um, yeah. And, you know, they support films. They, they were big supporters of The Martian, Hidden Figures. Yeah. They they're smart about how they, their PR. They always have been. Mm -hmm. But they and gave us great access. We went down there. You know, they're showing us around Mission Control. Because we were, for a while there, we were like, are we going to film here? We didn't really know. But they showed us around, gave us great access, met a lot of people. And we've been sort of buffs for a while. Um been to films down there and met a, met a lot of people who worked on on Apollo 11 and met astronauts it's cool and in fact this is a fun one a couple weeks ago not even two weeks ago um, they showed they showed the movie on the space station <laughs> <laughs> and they liked it so much and in um, Jack Black Glenn Powell and I um, had a 30-minute conversation with two American astronauts up there it was <laughs> awesome because when they pass the mic here, they just the mic just floats. <laughs> just, they, they let go of it. And you realize, these guys, and they're up there for like months and months. You realize it, it was just cool. It was just amazing talking to these guys. And They're going to edit and put it out, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You'll, yeah. I, I'm kind of tongue-tied, just kind of like, wow, we're talking to these astronauts. They're up there. And I mean, I don't know. It just reminds you what special creatures astronauts are like it's 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 they're kind of such brilliant people and such kind of straight arrows they're all like engineers you know they're all went to MIT they're all that plus then they're physically they're amazing <laughs> and uh, they're just dialed in it's just a special kind of person that can do that and, and talking to them how they became an astronaut they said like qualifying they go through all these rounds and it I think it's harder to they're talking to people they went to elementary school with. <laughs> they said, yeah, they're calling your elementary school friends, see what kind of person you were. <laughs> you know, I think it's much more thorough than like being a Supreme Court justice or something. <laughs> it's like, um, <laughs> you know, it's like, it is, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm still in awe of um, the skill set that is required and the, the mentality to be in a little room for six months. 
So these guys who were born, you know, in the 40s, Milo, they clearly are huge. <laughs> they, they grew up loving astronauts. Like, is that, is that something that you've ever wanted to do in your life is become an astronaut like these guys? I forgot about this, but I was recently informed, uh, and I guess I kind of remember, but whenever I, whenever I was little, I wore like a orange like ast astronaut suit and whatever. Uh, and I always just thought I was Green Lantern. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, he's like, he's Green Lantern, he's cool. He was a pilot, not an astronaut, but same Close thing, enough, you yeah. know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Ref referring for the cinephiles in the audience to the classic Ryan Reynolds movie, <laughs> Green Lantern, <laughs> which you can watch. I, I, th I think MoMA's doing a screening of that this weekend. So um, I wonder if we have any other questions from our audience. Um, I'm hearing a, I hear a voice in the back. I think obviously, like at the core of it, it is that, you know. And plus, Houston, there's, you know, if you know Houston, and it, it's probably the l most nondescript large city in our country. There's not a lot of movies from there. People don't under people outside there don't understand Houston. It doesn't really have an identity, but it does if you're inside. I just haven't seen it depicted much. So yeah. it's one of our goals to like, hey, we're going to really show ca try to capture something about Houston we haven't seen much in movies. There's not a long list of. Uh, Good Houston movies, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a very some short list. There's some yeah. good ones. Last Night at the Alamo, great movie. Yeah, Captures Houston, one. really fake. But there's not, there's there's not many at all. Brewster, Brewster, Brewster McLeod, great movie. We've played it right. They here. go to Afterworld and Brewster McLeod, Yeah, we too, there was some remember. Brewster footage. Beginning of Local Hero. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> let's if we got any, let's take a couple more questions. From I see a hand right over here. Tell us about the process, yeah. So like the process, so like the process of filming it? Yeah. Your actor's yeah. process. I mean, oh. I mean like, you know, being an actor for yeah. <laughs> Uh, filming it was awesome, and that goes without saying. It was just pretty cool. Um, but with acting, I was kind of just winging it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like... Uh, I mean, I ha hadn't really acted before that, except for, like, in my bedroom wearing a Batman costume. <laughs> um, but... Like, sorry, it's really cold and I'm shivering. <laughs> uh, with, like, being an astronaut, I got to wear, like, wires and whatever. Um, that was pretty cool. Kinda the suit kind of sucks. It was really hot. <laughs> <laughs> it was just hot. It was like, I was melting. I was like, thought I was an ice cream cone on a hot summer day. <laughs> Yeah, it was like awesome because like even though it was acting, they're like now some of my best friends and whatever. Uh, and like Sa me and Sam or uh, yeah, me and I f I'm blanking on the movie name. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, me and Sam, uh, Greg. Yeah, older I remember. Oh yeah. yeah, older brother Greg. Uh, we're, we were like brotherly and like would mess with each other a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was uh what was what was it like to be directed by Rick to have this guy kind of kind of leading you through the scenes? What was that like? Uh it was like
fantastic uh, because, for one, it was just like any director would be s super scoop. I'm really cold. <laughs> that's that's movie theaters. It's just yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. Uh, it was like like it would be cool with any director, but I'm super glad that it was Rick because you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and <laughs> uh, no offense to Rick or anything, but I hadn't really heard of you because I was like 10 and <laughs> 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 and. <laughs> <laughs> and like I've watched School of Rock like a bunch, <laughs> um, but I didn't know anything because I was like a wee lad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hope that. Yeah. We just, you know, <laughs> let me just say it was just a pure joy working with Milo. This family we created, the parents too, Lee and Bill, mm -hmm. and oh yeah. it was just such a fun clan. I wanted this to be about family, you know? And uh, being the youngest, I was the youngest in my family. And uh, we just had so much fun. I think Miley was really good. Like after lunch, we, you, you'd have a stack of desserts. <laughs> and we're like, oh no. And he has that scene with Sam later. Like we're gonna, hmm, that one's gonna be a challenge. And these two <laughs> kids are bouncing off the walls. But it worked, it worked. <laughs> you know, it was great. And is it true that yeah, kind of like, you say that you were just kind of winging it, most actors are just kind of winging it, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, Milo had this quality. And talk, talk a little bit about the audition process, because we were shooting this film pre from the time we got a green light. We were shooting in six weeks, and you could only do that with an animated film. I remember telling you know Bruce Curtis like, well, we have to design everything to the inch, but we don't have to build it <laughs> physically. <laughs> it needs to be built in animation. We're going to do all that later. We just need a physical to occupy the space, but we had to have it all planned. So we were able to do that, and we cast it around quickly too. And we were just looking for interesting kids. I don't, not necessarily professional actor kids. I had some confidence I could, you know, just try to get a real performance. And Milo just had this quality as the, you know, the bunch of kids are at the audition and, you know, we're riding bikes. Remember that? That was fun. You guys were just, we were playing, but we're, we're looking closely. <laughs> like, oh, there were some good kids. Uh, God, that kid can't catch at all, you know? <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to be like, okay, maybe he can play the kid on. But, you know, they were kind of weeding themselves out. But you don't try to make it seem like a competition. But it is. <laughs> and people are slowly disappearing, <laughs> you know. And I think they start to realize, like, oh, I'm one of a few left here. It's like, it's time. And Milo just didn't, he was unflappable. He didn't care about it. He never changed his even keel and he, he didn't like try, to, the, the quality I like least in, in kid actors is um, them wanting to be liked too much, you know? Milo just didn't, he didn't care that much whether you, <laughs> what you <laughs> talked about. So I said, that's the quality. And I noticed he was a natural leader. Kids gravitated toward him. He had a little charisma. I could see, you know, you just study the dynamics. They're like, oh, okay, cool kid you wanna hang out with who isn't gonna get nervous or freeze, you know, qualities of an astronaut. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That, that made him perfect. I don't know. I just knew we'd. I knew it'd be perfect. You know? Kind of qualities of a movie star too, when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. You got to pull, not yeah. not. Yeah, don't try too hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take maybe one or two more questions from our audience. I see such a hand over here. This hand is going nuts. Right over oh, here. No. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun doing all those, picking out all the TV shows. <laughs> it was tough. We left out some good ones. <laughs> you know, if you go through that whole sequence, you know. Amazing. TV was amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> it sure felt that way. Yeah. At the time. <laughs> you know, I cut out more. I had a whole sequence on Houston wrestling. Oh while who I, you know, and a whole sequence on uh, Saturday morning cartoons. It was really fun to animate an animated cartoon. <laughs> but we just... <laughs> We're sitting there in the editing room. It's like, oh, how much can a movie be about people watching TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we push that to the max. Yeah, I don't think, I feel it teetering. You know, we're right on the cut. If we do that sequence and that other one, it's just, I think the ship goes under. So 
I hated to cut those because they were they were really yeah, funny. and they took a ton of research, and there was one yeah. where we were trying to integrate archival with some kid actors, and so this just <laughs> tremendous for, amount of work Houston went into the local who, TV that we then cut completely. Kitterick. Kitterick, yes. How many people here know who Kitterick is? I mean, Houston you people, be Houston. yeah. It was the after school show with this wonderful lady you could dressed in a cat outfit. Yeah, <laughs> she was a cat. <laughs> Yeah, Tommy Roll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, so. Let's get maybe one more question from the audience, and then uh, I want to hear a little bit more about what happens from here. How people can h help the film, although it seems like everybody in the world is going to watch this film. I see a hand right over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's an outstanding question. That's Let me just, that really is a good really good question. question. One real animation question of the evening. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've done a couple animated films before, but this was very different. You know, we were creating it, those would kind of a more computer version of rotoscoping. This was, we used an element of that in the performance capture of the people, but it was really more traditional uh, 2D with 3D elements and a little bit of performance, you know, in the, the rotoscope, just the outlines of the 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 people so it's kind of this mashup of styles nothing out of the ordinary it's really it's no proprietary software nothing special anyone can do this it's just what ideas you bring to it so that was really what we were going on but it was it's really ultimately more traditionally animated 2D so you made this whole movie at, at Troublemaker on in front of yeah green the, screen. the shoot was 20 days right you know over here at a uh, Troublemaker. And then you took that whole movie that was animated, and green. then at that point, I was dreaming in green. Yeah. Totally, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth, you know that feeling. <laughs> so there's a whole there's a whole version of this that's just all the actors on green screen, <laughs> on wires, yeah. on green yeah. screen. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah, that must look crazy. Effects. Yeah, just on. Yeah, there's a kind of a, I hesitate to call it even a version, but it, it was definitely the template that we we started animating from. So and it, the it was animation the was fun. This was truly creative and we really asked our animators to bring their own creativity to it they really got in the spirit of the times and they're all young none of them were alive back then but um they loved it they did their own research they loved the soundtrack they they just got into it and i think we were all really happy to be working on this film at this time you know so we all miss it you know once it was over it's like oh no but it just became everybody's life one cool thing that Rick did for the for the animators is, of course, you know, if you're on the set, if you're a troublemaker, if you're on the crew, even if you never talk to Rick during the day because there's no reason to, you feel part of it. Like you're right there, you're you're in it. And then due to COVID, everyone's working from home. The edit happened with yeah. everyone working from home. The animation happened, which was a huge pivot for everybody. They're used to all being in yeah, little know, groups, big, big teams, rooms together, you know, and you know, whatever. And so uh, at a certain point, I think Tommy said, you know, everyone's feeling really disconnected and like the energy's flagging because these people are never even meeting each other. Right. You know, they're in Zoom chats or whatever. So we did this giant like all animator Zoom party. Right. <laughs> and Rick uh, talked and showed some of his favorite scenes and gave um, context to them. But then just open it up for questions. And it could be about anything. Like one of the questions was about before sunrise or whatever. Yeah. And it just... <laughs> It made fee people, you know, it's like over 100 people on this call, but they felt like, okay, I'm part of this team, you know, like I'm, this is, yeah, cause these are my people or whatever. And, and they said it made a huge difference coming out of yeah, that, the momentum from it. Yeah, to get away, because, you know, before COVID, we would have been over to Amsterdam and, you know, getting to know everybody. That was impossible. So anything to bridge that gap. And, you know, films are kind of hierarchical. You know, I'm dealing really just with the supervisors. I'm not on Zoom calls with 150 people. I'm on the Zoom calls with like four people. And it all kind of trickles down. So yeah, it was great to, to just kind of get to know everybody, at least through Zoom. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was wonderful, wonderful experience this. You know, every, every step of it was, uh, was great. And I wa want to thank Netflix for um, wanting to do the movie. It was a yeah. strange looking script in a way, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It was like, oh, a lot of, a lot of narration, you know, a lot of, <laughs> what is that? It's, <laughs> is it real? That it is, but they were like, this woman, Katie Mullins there, she just really liked it. She goes, oh, I think it could be really good. So they were just great. 
and it's awesome that Netflix is providing a theatrical release yeah. for the film. Yeah. So that you know, all all week, you know, this week yeah. it's starting starting tomorrow here at AFS Cinema and a number of other theaters throughout the yeah. country, people can go watch it on the big screen. Yeah, like it's fun to see it with other people. What other yeah. people find funny, maybe yeah. you know, you know, whatever. It's it's we know the value of the theatrical experience. So for the next week um, in theaters, there's a couple in Houston, uh, New York, L.A. here. So Alamo, San Francisco, uh, San Francisco. London. Yeah, Toronto, that's kind of how Vancouver. Netflix does it. It's around, and I think it can keep playing at some of those even after it comes out on Netflix a week from tomorrow. Yeah, but yeah, you know. I, I asked if we can hold it over till the week after. So th we can. So that's, that's good, good to know. <laughs> so so this movie is going to be seen more than any other movie you've ever made. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Yeah, it, it's amazing how Netflix thinks too, because they're not. You know, I'm used to like everything builds up to a theatrical release, a release date. There's a lot of pressure, all that. They don't really care about a lot of things like a studio or even an indie um, production company would care about. They're just like, we've got these 230 million subscribers. We've got 400 and something million accounts world worldwide. They're like, we're going to be in 31 languages. They just, they have a system. But it is pretty cool that people, I think a filmmaker, you just want to get you want people to be able to see your movie. First, they have to hear about it. And uh, it's a challenge. It's really hard in the indie world to even get noticed. So it, it'll be different. You know, people ask me, what's it like in Netflix? Like, so far, so good. We've had these live screenings. And that's all you get anyways in an indie filmmaker. You have a, maybe a premiere, a few screenings, and then it plays for a couple weeks in a theater, and then it, you know, comes out. And, you know, so, so far, s it's been a very similar experience. But... Yeah, like that one weekend, I think 70% of the people who will ever see it will yeah. see it next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's potentially millions of people, so. Yeah, it's going to be huge. What the and hell? People are going to love it. It's but yeah, wonderful. Encourage people to see it in the theater. Yeah, can. absolutely. Yeah. And tell people tell people how good it is. It really helps a lot uh, because Netflix sees all those numbers. They have sort of a black box metric that they look at that nobody understands. Yeah, but I have no idea. There's always a black box. I have no idea. What but it makes them about. it makes them fund more good pictures and maybe more good pictures from here. Hey. Yeah. So I want to we'll thank you guys for making this wonderful film, Milo. <laughs> Milo. Milo. If you need an agent. <laughs> I would like to talk to you about that, okay? All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming hey, out. Thank we you, really guys. Appreciate it. Good seeing you.